Hello, Masoka Universe. Let's talk about a remarkable um, round of 16 day yesterday for the Women's World Cup. Uh, it started so innocuous. I actually I didn't. I saw only a little bit of the first game because I was more on uh, the Africa Cup of Nations or the Copa America because I thought there was a little bit more uh, to play for. But you know. Um, there was just personal preference. It's not because uh, the games themselves were bad. I mean, for England against Cameroon, I initially expected that this would go very much the same way as Germany and Nigeria. And in a way it did, but there was such a twist to it. It started kind of, I mean, England clearly the better team, and with Cameroon, we saw it already when they played the Dutch. They're very, very physically uh, always trying to um, get to, 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 to the opponent that way. However, they're also a little bit clumsy. They remind me really about African teams of the 80s, 90s and so on, where you see there's talent there, but it's not all that great yet uh, gelling together. So and that's how the first goal came, the uh, number five uh, of Cameroon stops across to the goalkeeper, of course, it's a back pass. Then the big, it takes a whole lot of time to get this uh, free kick executed. In the end, Houghton has it actually quite easy to put it into the net to make it 1-0 for England. Then there's not much happening until uh, White after uh, steals herself away from the defenders. It even looks to her that she's offside. She gets the ball and puts it into the net. Referee says offside. And then they look at it at VAR, and you can see that just by a um, fraction, she's not offside, which uh, speaks to her. Of course, the Cameroon players, who are already incensed about the back pass, and, you know, in general, the physical play, the temperature was quite high on that game, are going in meltdown mode. They are refusing, after the goal is given, they are refusing to continue play. Um, I understand the frustration, however, I'm not sure how, what, what I should do about it. They really, for four or five minutes, refuse to continue to play. I mean, this is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. And they even barely go into the locker room. They are waiting, and only because of TV rights, the teams are already there for quite a while. They are waiting for a kickoff. And you could see Cameroon, okay, we are coming to play now. Now, game on. And... Um, they even make them the 2-1 uh, um, through and shoot. But this time she is just by a fraction of sight. It's taken away and she is losing everything. And thanks to the captain and her team, I mean, they are really um, pulling it to, pulling her together. And I, I was actually feeling most for, 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 for the referee because she did everything right. I know it is. I know how frustrating this offside is. If it's just by a fraction here, a fraction there, and I think um, we clearly can discuss it. But going in that meltdown mode, I don't know. In addition, Cameron with a physical play, they should have had at least one or two sent off because you could see the frustration was there. Clearly there. Uh, there was one really bad foul. Um, that I could see where she, uh, she's stepping on the defender and, of course, doing nothing. <sighs> Greenwood then, after corner, makes it 3-0 in that sense. England more or less slavely to the next round, but it was everything but a nice afternoon for them and for Cameron. I think it was one of the most frustrating matches uh, at the Women's World Cup. Um, I understand frustration with VAR on the Cameroon part, but I also have to say, going to those extremes, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't want to sound like a German com commentator who really uh, didn't show any empathy with Cameroon, but I also understand that from an England point of view, from a professional point, point, point of view, this is also frustrating for everyone. And then the evening game that, again, I decided to watch Argentina uh, against Qatar uh, because I wanted to see whether Ar Ar Argentina will be able to advance or not. So France-Brazil, I, it was a really hard call for me, to be honest, but I decided to go with that. France-Brazil was the big matchup, and I actually expected that France actually will dispose of Brazil quite easily. Everything but. Uh, Gauvin scores early, but has the goal taken off for uh, offside. And then, um, yeah, what can I say? Brazil gave them their all. Um, 
Brazil had even more shots on goal, although France uh, probably was the more dangerous team. Gauvin in the 52nd gets the 1-0 uh, and you think, yeah, now they're finally on the way. By the way, what a weird jersey matchup for France-Brazil. France in their away kit and Brazil in yellow with white pants and blue socks. I don't know who came up with that. Did France choose on purpose to go with their away kit? What about play just like this? And it would be one of the most beautiful jersey matchups. So it was this one was messy. Brazil didn't give up though. And uh, Tysa puts one into the net in the 63rd. And uh, for a second it seems that it was an offside, but it wasn't. Just by a little bit, VAR looks at it and the goal is given. 1-1. One, one. And I, at that moment, honestly, I didn't see it, but I can only imagine that France's nerves were high. I mean, uh, you were expected to go past Brazil. Uh, the goal came, I think, after kind of poor defending by Renard as well. I mean, uh, it was a, a, a shot that was blocked, fell to Taisa, who, 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 who could put it in. Um, it goes to overtime where Dibinia, just at the end of the first period, has a glorious chance that is just cleared off the line. And then right at the beginning of overtime, Henri slams it home and hands France a hard-fought victory. Where I can only imagine that the only team that was really happy with that was the US. Because France doesn't seem like that much of an opponent at the moment. This means now, in the round of 16, we know that Norway will play uh, England on the 27th and on the 28th France is waiting for the winner of Spain at the United States. All the other matchups are still open. Well, if you have a chance, fill me in on France, Brazil. This is all I could gather now in the morning. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.